All callers, please mute your phone. Hallelujah. Great day, great new day to everyone. Welcome to the Millennial Temple, Holy Angel of Light, Intercessory Prophetic Prayer Line. Thank you for everyone that is on tonight. We are on day 10 of our fasting. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, as we move on. Whew. Okay. So the Lord has added some um, some new things. Um, I added it um, in the in the um, prayer from from seven o'clock today. So I'm I'm going to read that again. This will be added on from now on in our prayers. Hallelujah. Welcome, caller. State your name and where you're calling from. Karen, Trenton, New Jersey. Welcome, Minister of the New Covenant, Karen. Okay, so we are um, we we're getting we're getting ready to get into a new um, way of doing our prayers. Like I said earlier, the the Lord has added some things, and like I said, when He adds some things, I will be adding them. So um, it's going to change up just a little bit, but um, it's it's going to be worth it. So here we go. Holy, um, excuse me. We'll get into our breathing exercises first. We get into our breathing exercises so that we can center ourselves, so that we can focus on the Lord only. Hallelujah. Also, make sure you have your anointing oil. If you have your tallit, which is your prayer shore, make sure you put that on your head. Hallelujah. And now we're going to take a deep breath in. And then we're going to blow it out slowly. We're going to take a deep breath in. And we're going to blow it out slowly. We're going to take a deep breath in. And we're going to blow it out slowly. Lucretia Williams, San Angelo, Texas, Minister of the New Covenant. Welcome, Minister of the New Covenant, Lucretia. Okay, we're, we're on our last breath at this point. We're going to take a deep breath in. And this time when you blow it out, blow all negativity out, all doubt, all worry, all stress, anything that is not of the Lord. (sighs) Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, take over, Holy Spirit. Take over, Holy Spirit. Remove anything that's not of the Lord, Holy Spirit. Remove anything that would hinder us from getting this message that you're about to send to us, Holy Spirit. And we thank you, Holy Spirit. Touch each and every one, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. All right. As we apply this anointing oil, breaking free from sin, we break free from family generational curses, those curses of negative patterns of thinking, doing, and feeling, and responding to certain situations, similar to the way how our parents, grandparents, great-grandparents, and so has responded. We break free from DNA physical curses and illnesses, negative thought patterns and physical ailments that yokes us. Hallelujah. We break free of bondage and slavery to sin. For you, Father, have broken the bands of our yokes and made us walk upright, erect as free women and men. Therefore, we break every generational curse and yoke upon us and our family line. We anoint our neck. We anoint our neck. And you put it on the back of your neck. Our necks will grow fat and thick, gulged and sleek with faith in the Most High and His Son. We break any and all yokes. We rescind any invitation to evil we have given. We have found spiritual freedom in Yod alone. We will grow spiritually and tap into new levels of faith. We begin that by repenting. 
and cleansing all heart, all hearts, minds, and souls with the Lord's prayer. Our Father who art in the skies, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us for our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. And forgive us for our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. For, for we forgive men their trespasses, then our Heavenly Father will also forgive us. But if we do not forgive men and their trespasses, neither will our Father forgive our trespasses. And we will take heed and we will do and we we will take heed that we do not do our charitable deeds before men to be seen by them. Otherwise we will have no reward from our Father in heaven. Therefore, when we do a charitable deed, we will not sound the trumpet as the hypocrites in the synagogues and in the streets and in the churches do, that they may glory from men. Assuredly, Yah says to us, they have their reward. But when we do a charitable deed, we will not let our left hand know what our right hand is doing, that our charitable deed may be in secret, and our Father who sees in secret himself will reward us openly. And when we pray, we shall not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogue and on the corners of the street, that they may be seen by men. Assuredly, Yah says to us, they have their reward, but for us, when we pray, we will go into our room and shut our door. We will pray to our Father who is in the secret place, and our Father who sees in secret will reward us openly. And when we pray, we will not use vain repetitions as the heathens do, for they do for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Hallelujah. Therefore, we will not be like them, for our Father knows the things we have need of before we ask him and in, in this manner. So that's, that's the new part that got added today. So we thank you, Father. We thank you for forgiving us of our sins, sins of omission, sins of commission. If there was anything we did or said that wasn't in your will and your way, we thank you for forgiving us, creating us a clean heart and renewing the right spirit, your spirit, Father. Do not take your spirit away, Father, for we need your spirit. And we return back to you and we confess our sins and our father's iniquity and their treachery which they committed against you, and also because they walk contrary to you. And now we recall our covenant relationship, and we draw near to, to Yod, and he will come close to us as we recognize that we are sinners and that he will keep our soiled hands clean. We will not be disloyal, wavering individuals with divided interests. We will purify our hearts of spiritual adultery. We are intentionally seeking with our heart and to step into your presence, Yod, our soul and our spirit are in alignment with you, Lord. And now we anoint our eyes. Holy Spirit, let us see through your eyes and not our own. Holy Spirit, guide us as our, as our focus will remind, remain on you and we'll have a teachable heart. And now we come into agreement. For you, Lord, will instruct and teach us in the way we should go. You will guide and counsel us with your eyes. And now we proclaim, Lord, your eye sees the path you have laid for us. We will have a teachable heart so that your instruction is imparted to us, guiding our steps today. And now we anoint our forehead. As our forehead signifies our mind and your thoughts are higher than ours, therefore we put on the mind of the Messiah. Holy Spirit, let our mind be of your mind. And now we agree, for who has known or understood the mind, the counsels, and purposes of the Lord, so as to guide and instruct him and give him knowledge. But we shall have the mind of the Messiah, the Son of Life of Truth, and do hold the thoughts, the feelings, and purposes of his heart. Thank you for showing us the path of justice and righteousness in the way of overstanding. And now we proclaim, we set our thoughts on things of you today. We put on our helmet of salvation and we anoint our minds recognizing and acknowledging that we've been given the mind of the Messiah, that we can do all things through the Messiah who strengthens us. And now we anoint our mouth, just a little bit that goes on your tongue. As the mouth signifies the word we speak and the seeds we sow, 
and we choose of our free will to sow seeds of life and not death. Holy Spirit, let us speak from your mouth and not our own. We come into agreement with, we come into agreement. Let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, your firm, independentable rock and our redeemer. And now we proclaim, Lord, we recognize the words that we speak have power today. We will align our hearts with yours so that our words are acceptable and pleasing to you. And now we anoint our ears. Holy Spirit, let us see from your from your let us hear from your ears and not our own, as our ears signify obedience. And we will only be open to hearing God's voice so that we will obey your voice only. And now we agree. We are your sheep, and we are your own, and we're listening to your voice. You know us, and we follow you and you only. And now we proclaim, Lord, we are your sheep, and we can hear your voice, and we will follow no other. And now we anoint our right thumb. As the right hand signifies the covenant. Hallelujah. And now we agree. But rather we have come to Mount Zion, even to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to countless multitudes of angels and festival gatherings, and to the church assembly of the firstborn, who, Yod, who are registered as citizens in heaven, and to the Yod who is judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous and redeemed in heaven who have been made perfect. And to Yahshua the mediator, the go-between agent of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood which speaks of mercy, a better and nobler and more gracious message than the blood of Abel which cried out for vengeance from the ground. We now proclaim, Yahshua, your blood speaks on our behalf in the heavenly court, rendering a verdict in our favor. We agree with what the blood has spoken about the covenant promises that we have for, from you. And now we anoint our right toe. as the feet signify authority through Yahshua, and our feet are prepared with the gospel of good news. Holy Spirit, let our feet be your feet and not our own. Let our feet only walk where you want them to, Lord. And now we agree. Listen up. I have given you authority and power to trample upon serpents and scorpions and physical and mental strength and ability over all the powers that the enemy possesses, and nothing shall in any way harm us. And now we proclaim, Father, your authority empowers our feet to walk in your ways. You order our steps and we prepare us to stand firm in your promises. We will pull the truth down from the books of heaven, the spiritual realm, our minds, your mind to earth, the physical realm. We are anointed with the Holy Spirit. He has sanctified and set us apart and aligns us with Yah. We are anointed as kings and priests for as many as the promises of Yah. We all find our yes answer in you, the Messiah. And for this reason, we say, so be it to God, through him in his person and by his agency to the glory of God. Thank you, for it is God who confirms and makes us steadfast and establishes us in joint fellowship with him in the Messiah and has consecrated and anointed us, ending us with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, for he has also appropriated and acknowledged us as his by putting his seal upon us and giving us his Holy Spirit in our hearts as a security deposit and guarantee of the fulfillment of his promise. And now the salutation. Thank you. And we say to Yahshua, the Messiah, the faithful and trustworthy witness, the firstborn, the prince ruler of the kings of the earth, to him who ever loves us and has come once and for all, loosed and freed us from our sins by his own blood to, to him, be glory and dominion forever and ever. Let it be so. Because of this anointing, we will walk in kingdom alignment, which is to live in the fullness of our salvation, not defeated, not doubtful, not depressed. And we use these tools from you, Father, that we can use to speak to the spiritual realm. For we're not warring against flesh and blood, but against dark forces, and we will overcome them in the spirit. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in Yod, for pulling down, overthrowing, and the destruction of strongholds casting down arguments and every high thing that exhausts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity as we refuse arguments and theories and reasonings and every proud and lofty thing 
that set yourself up against the true knowledge of God. And we lead every thought and purpose away captive into the obedience of the Messiah, the anointed one. Being in readiness to punish, rebuke, bind, and loose every insubordinate from their disobedience when we own submission and obedience as a church, the body of the Messiah, the temple are fully secured and complete. As we will walk in agreement with our Father who art in the skies and heed his instructions so that we will remain blessed at all times in the face of adversity. Thereby, not ever giving the evil one, Satan and his helpers, a way to curse us with curses that have legal access to us. We will choose to not ever walk in our carnal minds as this is coming out of agreement with our Father. He will always be first in our heart and soul, thereby not allowing the devil to be a foothold in our life. We will obey the voice of our Father, our Yad, to observe carefully all his commandments and his statutes, which he commands us today. We will remain in complete alignment so that no curse will come upon us and cause confusion and illnesses in the body. We are co-heirs with the Messiah, and we have an inheritance in our Father. We agree with the promises of Yad written in his book. We are calling on these heavenly promises to be drawn down to earth in our life for your name's sake. We are now telling the devil, the evil powers of the world, that we're not only seated with Yad in the heavenly places in the spirit, but that we're aligning our soul, mind, spirit, will, emotions, thoughts with him in the physical. We are taking what is written in the heavenly books and commanding that they be manifested through our earthen vessel, our body which are his. We are telling the spiritual realm that we recognize and know and agree that we are anointed and empowered by the Holy Spirit to walk in divine healing, divine protection, divine knowledge, divine power and authority, and divine love from the Creator. The enemy will not rob us of our health through family curses and negative thought patterns. We will now anoint our hearts. spiritually and physically, to guard them, keeping our hearts in line with Yah's word about our health as we represent his divine glory and not overcome by depressive doubt. For as we think in our heart, so well, so it shall be. We will keep our heart with all diligence. We will guard our heart, and above all, we guard it, for out of it flows the springs of life. We will not be tempted into negative thinking. We will take every thought captive and make it obedient to the Messiah. For we're in agreement with Yah's words and anointed, intentionally set apart for his purposes. We will diligently heed the voice of our, of our Lord, our Yah, and do what is right in his sight, and give ear to commandments, and keep all his statutes. And he will put none of the diseases on us, which he has brought in the Egyptians through the ten plagues of disobedience. For he is the Most High, our Father, who heals us. We shall call the elders of the church, and they will help us pray over those that are sick, anointing them in the oil in the name of the, of the Most High. For protection, we will not forget Yah's goodness. We will, step out from under, we will not step out from under Yah's divine protection. We will not forget about the price that was prayed on our behalf. We will not forget how the Holy Spirit leads us through the valley of the shadow of death, protecting us from evil. For we have the Holy Spirit that has anointed us. But we have returned back to you, changed our views and purpose to accept the will of Yah in our inner self and will not reject it and will be baptized, every one of us, in the name of Yahshua the Messiah for the forgiveness and the release from our sins. And we shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. We step into his presence and we seek him. We anoint our stomach. our shield of protection. As the enemy is prowling around, looking to devour, we will arise and oil our shields for our deadly foe is lurking at the gate. And this makes us agile and prepare for war. For we have the shield of faith, and we claim protection of God over our entire lives, letting the enemy know he has nothing on us because our faith is in the Messiah alone. We lift up over our covering the shield of saving faith, over all upon which we, he will quench all flaming missiles of the wicked one. We know that Yod is not keeping knowledge from us. We, he will not change his view of our good father as he, excuse me, the devil will not change our view of our good father as he did with Adam and Eve in the garden. No doubt, no fear, no beguiling, no seducing, no cunningness, no corruption, no insecurity, no inferiority. Yet Yah's words will always remind us that we did not leave us. He did not leave us as orphans, but instead gave us a helper. 
the Holy Spirit who anoints us, who is our comforter, our counselor, our helper, our intercessor, our advocate, our strengthener, us and stand by that remains with us forever. We know and recognize the spirit of truth. We receive it and welcome and take to heart. We know and recognize him for he lives with us constantly and will be in us. He will not leave us as orphans, comfortless, desolate, bereaved, forlorn, helpless. He will come back to us. We know that we are anointed for a purpose and you will guide us into all truth. We agree with Yah's word and have anointed ourselves with oil. Many blessings, praise, Lord of nation, commendation, and eulogy be to the Yod and the Father of our Lord, Yahshua the Messiah, with every spiritual given by the blessing in the heavenly realm, for the unity of the spirit by the action of his power that is at work within us. And we are able to carry out his purpose and do super abundantly for over and above all that we dare ask or think, infinitely behind, beyond our highest prayers, desires, or thoughts, hopes, or dreams. For when the spirit of truth, the truth-given spirit comes, the Holy Spirit, he will guide us into all the truth, the whole full truth, for he would not speak his own message on his own authority, but he would tell whatever he hears from the Father. He would give the message that has been given to him, and he will announce and declare to us the things that are to come that will happen in the future. Yet, we have an anointing for the Holy One, and we know all things, and we hold a sacred appointment, a given unction from the Holy Spirit, and we will know the truth or know all things that we already know. Kingdom power. We will not underestimate the power we have now been, been given. We will not only think that Yah's word is true in theory, but we will apply it practically. Satan will not keep us from using the power we have in the Messiah. We will pray for all things that are written in heaven. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. But listen up. I have given you all authority and power to trample upon serpents and scorpions and physical and mental strength and ability over all the power that the enemy possesses, and nothing shall in any way harm you. We are tapping into your power, and we will live anointed and empowered. We are anointed as a royal priesthood, a holy nation, Yah's special possession called out of darkness into the light. But the spirit of the Most High is upon us, because he has anointed us the anointed ones, the Messiah's children, to preach the good news to the poor. He has sent us to announce relief to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to send forth as delivered those who are oppressed, who are downtrodden, bruised, crushed, and broken down by calamity. We agree that we're free in the Messiah and setting free any part of us that has been held captive. And the darkness that once consumed us is no longer master over us. That we can now see and we are empowered to give a message of hope, divinely displaying what Messiah's freedom looks like. For the words we now speak are from the authority of our Father. Hallelujah. For the way, the truth, and the life that we're in the Father and that the Father is in us. That what we say is not of our own authority and of our own accord, but the Father who lives continually in us and does the work, his work, his own miracles and deeds of power. For the promise of the Spirit assures us most solemnly that if we steadfastly know in him, we will ourselves be able to do the things that our Father does and will do even greater things than these because we go to the Father. And he will grant whatever we command in his name as presenting all that I am so that the Father may be glorified and extolled and through the Son. For I am who I am and what I am and will be what I will be. And we shall say this to everyone that I am has sent me to you. He has imparted the same authority with the knowers. We now understand our anointing that we will pray powerful prayers that declare to the spiritual realm, Yod is for us, not against us. Prayers that would keep his covenant promises and empower us to do his will as we engage the physical realm for alignment with the spiritual realm. Let it be so. And now we pray our prayer for spiritual protection for our health and our wealth. As we dwell in the secret place of the Most High, we shall remain stable and fixed, abiding under the shadow of the Almighty, whose power no foe can withstand. We would say of the Lord, He is our refuge and our fortress. Our God on and in Him we lean, and in relying on Him we confidently trust. For the Lord is our shepherd to feed, guide, and shield us, we shall not lack. Surely He shall deliver us from the snare of the fowl and from the deadly pestilence. He shall cover us with his feathers, and under his wings shall we trust and find refuge. His truth and his faithfulness shall be our shield and our buckler. He makes us to lie down in fresh, tender, green pastures. He leads us beside the still and restful waters. 
They in every wild beast according to its kind, all the livestock according to their kind, every moving thing that creeps on the land according to its kind, and every fowl according to its kind, every winged thing of every sort. He refreshes and restores our life, our soul, ourselves. He leads us in the path of righteousness, uprightness, and right standing with him, not for us earning it, but for his name's sake. We shall not be afraid of the terror of the night, nor of the arrow of the evil plot, the standards of the wicked that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that starts in darkness, nor the destruction and sudden death that surprises and lay waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at our side and ten thousand at our right hand, but it shall not come near us. Only as spectators shall we be ourselves, inaccessible in the secret place of the Most High, as we witness with our eyes only the reward of the wicked. Yes, though we walk through the summer valley of the shadow of death, we will fear, dread no evil. For you are with us, your rod to protect and your staff to guide. They comfort us. Because we've made the Lord our refuge in the Most High our dwelling place. For he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall remain stable and fixed under the shadow of the Almighty, whose power no foe can withstand. Because we have set our love upon him. He will set us on high because we know we understand his name. El Yahuwah Ilion Ilion El. And we have a personal knowledge of his mercy, love, and kindness. Trust and rely on him, knowing he will never forsake us. No, never. There shall no evil before us, nor any plague or calamity come near our tent. Or our dwelling. We even give his angels a special charge over us to accompany, defend, and preserve us in all our ways of obedience and service, and keep us in all of our ways. They shall bear us up on their heads as we dash our foot against the stone. For it is written, He will give his angels a special charge over us to guard and watch closely and carefully. And in their hand they will bear us up lest we strike our foot against the stone. For he will give his angels a special charge over us to preserve us in all our ways of obedience and service. They shall bear us up on their hands lest we dash our foot against the stone. Are not the angels or ministers, spirit servants sent out in the service of El, Yahuwah, Ilion, Ilion, El, for the assistance of those hearts who inherit salvation? For you shall tread upon the lion and the adder. The young lion and serpent shall be trampled underfoot. Listen up. I have given you authority and power to trample upon serpents and scorpions and physical and mental strength and ability over all the power that the enemy possesses. And nothing shall in any way harm us. You prepare a table before us in the presence of our enemies. You anoint our head with oil. Our brimming cup runs over. Because we have set our love upon him, therefore will he deliver us. He will set us on high because we know and we overstand his name. We have a personal knowledge of his mercy, love, and kindness. We trust and rely on him, knowing he will never, ever forsake us. No, not ever. We shall call upon him, and he shall answer us. He shall be with us in trouble. He would deliver us and honor us with long life where he satisfy us and show his salvation. We will diligently, earnestly hearken to the voice of the Lord our God and will do what is right in his sight and will listen to and obey his commandments and keep all his statutes. And he will put none of the diseases upon us which he brought upon the Egyptians, for he is the Lord which heals us. Surely our only goodness and mercy and unfailing love shall follow us all the days of our life. And through the length of our days, the house of the Lord and his presence shall be our dwelling place. In the holy name of Yahshua, the Messiah, it is so. Let it be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We are now in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Whew. We receive you, Holy Spirit. We submit to your authority. We submit to your authority, Holy Spirit. We submit to your authority, Holy Spirit. You are welcome here. We receive you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, um, we're going to get into 10 life lessons to prosper. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Ten life lessons to pro- to prosper. So, one, love is more than a feeling. It is a choice. Love is a choice. We choose to love the ones that we love. It's a choice. We choose love. We must always choose love. As our Father says, he wants us to love others as we would love ourselves. 
But again, it's a choice. Two, there is no shame in not knowing. We do not know everything. We do not know. But the Lord is revealing a lot to us, and we thank him for that. But there is no shame in not knowing. Three, healthy perspective with long-term grand view and focus. So we have to get our goals in perspective. It has to be a healthy perspective with with the long-term grand view. What is the view, the vision that the Lord is giving to us? And um, I should have said this before, but the next time that we, we have prayer or we meet, make sure you have a notebook so you can write certain things down because I'm going to be um, giving out homework a little bit. Okay, so your homework tonight is to go to the Lord and ask him, what is his vision? Say, Lord, show me your vision and make it plain. Lord, show me your vision and make it plain. And then write down, what it is that he says to you. Okay, number four, don't take anything for granted. You know, when we take things for granted, that's like saying that it's always going to be there. That's like saying that, oh, I'm going to wake up in the morning, so you know what, tomorrow I'm going to go to the store. We can't take that for granted. We have to say, Lord, this is, this is where we're at, and we should have been saying it from the beginning but we didn't know. Again, there's no shame in not knowing. We have to now say, Lord, if it is your will, I am going to go to the store tomorrow. And that's giving him reverence. That is giving him the the choice to choose because it is his rightful way. And we shouldn't take it for granted that we're going to wake up the next day. Five, it's not all about you. It's not all about you. It is not all about I, 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 I. When we pray, we pray we, us, our. We say they. We don't just say I because it's not all about us. And this is where things come into place because we think about what I want to do, what I this, what I that. But we can't. We have to, again, ask the Lord, what is it that you want me to do? These are the kind of questions that we ask the Lord, things that we want, we command. Um, But we ask the Lord skillful, godly questions. Lord, what is it that you want me to do? Lord, what is it that I should do? Lord, um, how do you want me to do this? Not about what I, I feel like I should do this. I feel like this should happen. I feel that that should happen. No, I is, is, is one. It's you by yourself is selfish. But when we, when we include everyone, it's together, and we're becoming one. Because we're going to be one mind, one spirit, one soul. We're becoming the one. And that one is going to be the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And six, you don't always get what you want. We don't always get what we want. And we're going to get into that. And the Lord says... Let your conduct be without covenant. Be content with things as you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave you or forsake you. And that's Hebrews 13.5. So the Lord is saying, let your character or moral disposition be free from love of money. Love of money is what is happening right now. Love of money is what's causing all of these things that's happening right now. Because in the name of money, for the love of money, which is a sin, which is abomination, the love of money. Yes, we need money to survive, but we're not supposed to love it. Because when you're loving money, then you're saying that you're worshiping that money. You're saying that you're taking that money and putting it above the Lord. And that is exactly what's happening. People are taking the love of money and putting it above the Lord. 
and not caring about his commandments and his laws and what it is that we should be doing as people. And that is simply loving one another as you love yourself. But because of the love of money, they're just doing all kinds of things. So the Lord said, be free from love of money, including greed, avarice, lust, and craving for earthly possessions, and be satisfied with your present circumstances and with what you have. For he, Yod, himself has said, I will not in any way fail you, nor give you up, nor leave you without support. I will not, I will not, I will not. I will not in any degree leave you helpless, nor forsake, nor let you down. Relax my hold on you, assuredly not. These are the Lord's words. All of that. Then he took me to Josh 1, 5, and he says, no man, excuse me, Yahshua, it is, but it's a J in the Bible, but there are no J's in Arabic and Hebrew, so that book is actually Yahshua's book. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so will I be with you. I will not fail you nor forsake you. Abandon and forsake means to abandon someone or something. And the Lord is saying he will not do this. The Lord has truth. He has promises. His words do not lie. So if we can take this right here, if we can take this, I will not in any way fail you, nor give you up, nor leave you without support. I will not, I will not, I will not in any degree leave you helpless, nor forsake you, nor let you down or relax my hold on you. Assuredly, I'm not. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so will I be with you. I will not fail you nor forsake you or abandon you. If we can take that and put that into our affirmation and put it in every place in our home where we're going to be at and read that every time we're feeling some kind of way about what's going on, man, fear would have no place to live. Worry would have no place to live. Stress would have no place to live. None of those spirits would have a place to live because we would look and we would read and we would speak it. We would sow these seeds of life because the Lord told us that we would speak with sowing seeds. So we would sow these seeds of life and then we would reap what we sow. So make that an affirmation if you need that. Make that an affirmation and put it all around your house. And that's um, Hebrews 13, 5 and, and, um, and Joshua 1, 5. And put it all around your house and read it every time you're feeling some kind of way, every time you're getting overwhelming, every time the evil one comes in and tries to say, oh, you're not worthy. Oh, you're not going to be able to be able to do this. All that talk, all that conversation that we shouldn't be entertaining that we should shut him down right away. Read those words. Stand on those words. Those are powerful, powerful. Matter of fact, I'm going to make that my motto. And then the Lord says, uh, oh, then he says, and then we, we go into it. Thank goodness we do not always get what we want. This may sound strange at first, but there are many reasons why it is true. Sometimes what we want runs against our core, our core. And that's what the Lord calls us to do. He calls us to be prophets. He calls us to be ministers of a new covenant. He calls us to be kings and priests. He calls us to be evangelists. He calls us to be pastors. He calls us to be teachers. He calls us to do all of that. For you to do that, you have to stop the worldly stuff. And you got to get into what it is that he needs you to do. So we may want to go out dancing. I know I love to dance. And we may want to go out dancing. But if there's a party going on right now, I can't go. Because I know that at 12 o'clock, 
I have to be on this call. So what I want is not always good because it's going against them. Or we simply do not yet have the character receive it. Greater still, sometimes we do not get what we want because it is dangerous. And you ever you you ever say you know what I'm a I'm a I'm a I'm a go out and I'm a go to this party that so and so is going, and then every time you try to get out something's happening something's keeping you from going, and then finally you realize that the Holy Spirit is talking to you, and you say you know what uh, something ain't right I don't think I'm gonna make it here because there's too much stuff that's happening, and then next thing you know there's something crazy that happened at that party. And you're like, wow, that was the Lord who never took his hand, who never forsakes you, saving you from your want. Because our want is not a need. He said, I will supply your needs according to my riches and my glory. Our needs, not a want. A want is a desire. Yeah, he gives us the desires of our heart, but are they his desire? Are, 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 they, are they what he wants for us? And that's what we have to get into now. We have to really sacrifice ourselves to the Lord. Okay, so we don't get what we want because of the things. All right, picture this. A child six years old who wants their own zoo, and they being six almost certainly lack the resources to care for the animals, or even the wisdom to separate the gazelles from the lions. They doubtless do not even own land on which to build their zoo or the money to maintain it. Yet, even if Yod were to give them the land, zoo, and finances, how would the six-year-old know who to hire? How would they be able to keep their curiosity in check and stay away from those animals that could eat, trample, or poison them? especially when the most deadly are so often in bright, attractive packaging. And if you know about brightness, we're attracted to brightness. A baby is attracted to brightness. If you give a baby a dollar and a shiny dime, that baby's going to pick that dime. There are a million and one reasons why that child should not be given their own zoo and the responsibility that goes with it. And just like with that child, Yah sometimes does not give us what we want or delays it until we are prepared to keep us safe. Because just as the zoo might sound wonderful and safe to a six-year-old, we may desire things that in our youthful ignorance are brightly packaged but deadly. And we have done that so many times. We got so many stories about how we desired something and it turned out to be a mess. So seven, you can't please everyone. For now, for, for do I now persuade men or God or Yod, or do I seek to please men? For if I still please men, I would not be a bond servant of the Messiah. Galatians one ten. No other gospel. Now, am I trying to win the favor of men or of Yod? Or do we seek to please men and women? If we were still seeking popularity with men and women, we should not be a bondservant of the Messiah. So we can't seek to please the world and seek to please the Lord as well. It's not going to happen. This is where I was saying choices, choices here. Yeah, we got a big choice to make. Well, my choice is already made with the chip. I ain't getting it. But we got choices to make right now. Am I going to do what I need to do for the Lord, or am I going to please this person right here? If there's something that I, 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 I want to do, like earlier I went out to lunch with somebody, I said, okay, I can go out to lunch at this time because I'm off my fast at this time, but I got to be back home at this time because I got to be back on at 7 o'clock at this time. So I had to tell them. I could not say, well, you know what, uh, if they wanted to go somewhere to please them, it's like, oh, yeah, I can go. No, that's, that's short to my responsibility. I can't do that. So now we have to choose what we're going to do. Now, yes, there are things, there are work, there are stuff like that that we have to do. Yes, 
But other things that we don't have to do, you got to make the choice now. Because actually what we're going through right now is a test. The Lord is testing us right now. The highway of the upright is to depart from evil. He who keeps his way preserves his soul. And that's Proverbs 16, 17. The highway of the upright turns aside from evil. He who guards his way preserves his life. We have to guard our way. We can't be all willy-nilly anymore. We've been called. He called us. And now we got to answer the phone. And now once we answer the phone, we got to give the response. And we got to carry on through. It is easy for us to become people pleasers. Most of us, since our youth, have had at least one person we wanted to please, to make proud, be it a relative, a teacher, a friend, a boss. It feels good to have someone we respect and admire pleased with us, but it can also become a vice. Is that not true? Don't we lose ourselves when we get with somebody that, that we love and we want to please them? Even though we want to do something else, they want to go to to um, Red Lobster all the time, but you want to go to Carabas, which is the Italian, and Red Lobster is the, sea, the seafood, and every time they want to go to Red Lobster, they don't never want to do what it is that you want to do, and because you're trying to please them and you don't want to cause no, no, no vice, you're like, yeah, we go to Red Lobster. Yeah, I love Red Lobster. All in the, in the interim, you're feeling some kind of way, and you're starting to lose yourself because you're not identifying with what it is that you like to do. And if you're in a relationship with somebody, then that person should be able to do the things that you like to do, and you should be able to do the things that they like to do. You should be able to compromise, take turns, relate with each other. We shouldn't have to give our all for someone to love us. That's not what love is. That's called control. When we do things with the thought, what will they think if I do this? Or don't worry that we will in some way disappoint disappoint another person or fail to be viewed in the light we desire. We can become enamored with a false sense of self. We can become more concerned about what others might think than what we or even Yod will, saying yes to things we know we're not called to or no to things that are ours. One of the most important life lessons in freeing revelation is the knowledge that the only one that we are meant to please is God. That is the only one. When I get on here, if somebody um, does not like what I'm saying, it don't matter to me. The only one I'm trying to please is the Lord. And when I put these videos out and nobody's liking them, nobody's watching them or whatever, it don't matter to me. The only one I'm here to do is please the Lord. Would I like for people to get the knowledge? I would love for people to get the knowledge because it would change their lives. But I'm not here to please anyone. I'm only here to please the Lord. Number eight, pace yourself. For which of you intended to build a tower does not sit down first and count the cost, whether he has enough to finish it. And he took me to Luke 14, 28, the course of discipleship, and this is what we're going through now. We're becoming disciples. And from disciples, we're going to get into be kings and priests under the order of Melchizedek. For which of you wishing to build a farm building does not first sit down and calculate the cost to see whether he has sufficient enough means to finish it. So we got to sit down and we got to figure things out. We got to budget ourselves. We got to see what it is that we need to do. Now we know we got to get six months of food. So when the Lord give us the money, the provision to get this vision of his, then we got to sit down and budget. Okay, well, let me see. I got this for this. I got to pay that for that. Okay, I could do this for that. If we just go all out willy-nilly, we're going to be messed up because we're not going to be able to finish it. 
So we gotta we we get this is this is pulling us into into um in 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 into doing things right. The Lord is pulling us into doing things right because now we have to be we before we were like, you know what, I got money in the bank. Let me just go ahead and do this. Swipe, swipe, swipe. Get on online, online, online. Go out, go out. It's okay. But now we have something that we're working towards. This is a goal that we must do no matter what. So now we got to sit down and write down, okay, what is it that I need? How much of it do I need? And what is it going to cost? And then we could budget ourselves and everything will flow smoothly. And then he took me to roof 318. Then says she, sit still, my daughter, until you learn how the matter turns out for the man will not rest until he finishes the matter today. So in order for us to do that, we got to sit down sometime. We got to sit down sometime. So he says, um, in this day, an age when economies, reputations, etc., can be made or destroyed in seconds, where we can travel from one country to another in hours, minutes in some cases, it is easy to overdo. Each of us wear a million hats, from family to business, and sometimes our expectations are too great. Not because we're meant to aim low or not work toward goals with diligence, but because sometimes we get overexcited. We know that everything has to be done by such and such time and never think to consult the yard on if it is achievable or if it is his goal for us. Like I was saying earlier, we got to ask him everything, y'all. We can't just be making decisions on our own anymore. We're in the rim now where we have to literally go to him and ask him, what should I do, Holy Spirit? What should I do? And how should I do it? We exist to do more, accomplish more, and yet if we simply take a moment to breathe and focus on Yod, we can achieve more with less. Because with Yod, we are not spinning our wheels uselessly. And we're not because he's not mess. He's strategic. He's excellent. And whatever he tells us, it's going to be so divine, <laughs> so wonderful. You're going to be like, wow. I would have never thought of that, Lord. It's okay to pace ourselves. In fact, often it is advisable. We have to weigh the course, know our limits, and consult God. It is better to wait a few days or even a few minutes, if nothing else, than to make a decision in haste. Sit still until you know how the matter will turn out. Your health. Your health is the most valuable asset. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from Yod, and you are not your own? For you were bought at a price. Therefore glorify Yod in your body and in your spirit, which are Yod. And that's Corinthians six nineteen through 20. Our body is is the temple, the very sanctuary of the Holy Spirit who lives within us, who we have received as a gift from God. We are not our own. Hallelujah. We are not our own. We've been taught that we're own. We're our own. If you see what's happening out in the world right now and where it's going to, they're saying you're your own. The Antichrist spirit is saying you are your own. Do what it is that you want to do, how you want to do it. You don't want to worship him? You ain't got to worship him. You want to worship the devil? Worship the devil. You don't want to be a man? Go ahead and be a woman. You want to get a womb? Go ahead and get a womb. All of that. You don't want to be faithful in your marriage? You ain't got to. It's whatever you want to do. And nobody is saying, wait a minute, I don't have a right to do this. It's about freedom, liberation, this and that. Earlier I spoke about Black Lives Matter, about what it really means, what their, what their, their, um, 
what whose lives they're affirming. Right on their website, been there for as long as they've been there. But we didn't take the time to go look. And we put on a Black Lives uh, shirt. We put on Black Lives hat. We went crazy, don't we? When it comes to black, we go crazy. Black power, black this, black that. Not even looking to see what it's about. All they had to do was have the word black. All they had to do was kill some, kill some, murder some people. And then come up with these protests. Oh, we got to do this. We got to do that. And then say, oh, Black Lives Matter. And then paint it right in the street, driving over it. It's on the walls. It's on the, it's, it's um, on buildings. It's written up. It's everywhere. And we never went to the website to see who these Black Lives people were. So here we go. We are expansive. Now, when you first started, it talked about Trayvon Martin, you know, and all that. But let's go down. It says we are expansive. We are a collective of liberators who believe in an inclusive and spacious movement. An inclusive and spacious movement. Hmm. Inclusive. That means when something is inclusive, what? what? What are you saying? And spacious. What does that have to do with anything? With someone being murdered? We also believe that in order to win and bring as many people with us along the way, we must move beyond the narrow nationalism that is all too prevalent in black communities. We must assure ensure that we're building a movement that brings all of us to the front. We affirm the lives of black, queer, and trans folks, disabled folks, undocumented folks, folks with records, women and all black lives along the gender spectrum, and our network centers, those who have been marginalized within black liberation movements. Wow. They didn't say nothing about people. They said folks. I'm I'm still looking up. I'm still looking up the meaning of folks on the, on the Webster's dictionary on Google. I said, well, what, what does folks mean? It ain't even really. It don't even have a definition. It says, well, I'm going to go see my folks. Wow. So these people are being murdered, murdered daily, all the time, all these years, and you call them folks? And the very ones that you put up there first is black, queer, and trans folks, and disabled folks, and undocumented folks, and folks with records, and women and all, what what does that have to do with anything? Lives matter, and we can't keep taking stuff and grabbing on to it because somebody else is doing it or because it sounds good. We, in this day and time, have to diligently do our research. Diligently. And then they even have, um, once you once you go ahead and you become a member, it goes even deeper. They say they want to remove the patriotic from the family. The father. They want to remove the father from the family. They want to create a whole new family life. Why? Why would you want to remove the father from the family when the Lord said the father was needed, when the Lord said the father was the head? Well, because if you are, and and I'm not saying if that's your your preference, that's your preference. But if you're if you're a trans folk, if you you know you're, you're in any of those things, queer, if you're any in in those things, then you want to be able to have children, and you don't want to have the 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 title of a father there. You just want to be somebody that has children. 
because you're not having children the normal way, the right way. And you remove the father, then guess what? Who is going to be there? Who's going to protect the family? Because guess what? A man and a woman married is the full arm of, of the Lord. I'm feeling like we back in slavery again because that's what the masses did. Back then, everybody was married. And they ripped them apart. They ripped the families apart. They ripped the man away from the wife. They ripped the man away from the, of the kids. They ripped them apart. And here it is right here. This very um, movement is looking to do the same thing again and doing it and doing it deep, deep. And then here it is, Gates, and I posted the video on my thing. I don't know how long it's going to be up there. He got a YouTube channel. You see how many followers he got? And he sat up there and he said, Will saving lives have something to do with overpopulation? What kind of question is that? What does that matter? You should be saving everyone's lives, whether or not it's overpopulated or not. And who said that it was overpopulated? Who came up with this population stuff? Because the Lord said, be fruitful and multiply and subdue the earth. And be fruitful and multiply is to have children. When, 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 when Noah and them landed after the, the flood, he said, replenish the earth. That's the children. So where did this population thing come in at? Eugenics. That's what he's into. Look him up. Look and see what he's up into. Look up eugenics, E-U-G-E-N-I-C-S. Look at how far back it goes. Look at their core values and what it is that they think. He's not the only one. Fauci is in it. They all in it. And we look at these people and take what they say as being concrete. Oh, the numbers is going up. Oh, Lord. Oh, no. What are we going to do? Da, da. Oh, I'm scared. I'm this, that. I'm wearing my mask. I'm wearing my gloves. I'm hand sanitizing every 55 minutes. I'm cleaning up my house. I'm um sanitizing my groceries. Oh, no, I can't hug you. No, that's fish bump. Let's do this. Let's do that. Wow. And they are removing the very thing that the Lord said we're supposed to do, loving each every one of us. And people are dying from a lack of love. And we sit there in front of that television where they tell lies visually and take every word that they say and just run with it. Even women and men of, of the Lord are scared that went to church every Sunday, that went to church every Wednesday, that was on this committee in that committee. It's coming down to who you want to know, are you going to know them and their lives, or are you going to know the Lord and his truth? We don't sit here every night and go and read all those prayers. We don't anoint ourselves for no reason, and we don't read that spiritual uh, prayer of protection of our health and our welfare for no reason. We do it because we're wielding spiritual weapons, spiritual swords that are cutting down everything that the evil one is trying to do because we are praying and warring in the spirit where it starts from. If we start warring in the physical, it is already here. And so when we warn, we're warring in the, in, in before it even comes. We are pulling down those strongholds, strongholds with, with the words. And they're not our words. They're the Lord's wrote words. He wrote these words. Why are we scared? Why are we fearful? 
The Lord said, I did not give you a spirit of fear. I did not. I gave you a spirit of sound mind, power, might, all of that. But the one thing we keep saying is fear. I'm going to look up that um, scripture real quick. And um, I know we're going over a little. Just bear with me, y'all. The Holy Spirit is speaking. And look up that that um, that scripture. And here's another one that I want to make this our um, affirmation because Second Timothy two two one seven. That's it. Second Timothy verse. Um, Second Timothy chapter one verse seven. And, of course, they got all these different versions. But basically, the Lord is saying, I did not give you a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and self-control, but of a sound mind. That's what he gave us. So if the Lord is saying, I did not give you a spirit of fear, fear, the Lord is saying this, then why do we keep picking up that spirit of fear? And this is something we got to ask ourselves. We got to ask ourselves, why do we keep picking up something that the Lord said he did not give me? I'm not going to pick up something that the Lord said he did not give me. I'm going to say, wait a minute. The Lord said he didn't give me this. What am I doing in this fear? I'm not supposed to be in this place. Let me get out of this place. We got to put on the garment of praise. We got to put on the garment of praise and just praise him. When we do that, it lifts the heaviness off of us. When we praise him, it lifts the heaviness off of us. Because when we're praising We are celebrating him. We're thanking him. We're joyful in him. And these are the things that we got to do, y'all. Again, I don't force nobody to do anything, and the Lord's not going to force anybody to do anything. He's not going to do it. So he says, do you not know that your body is the temple, the very sanctuary of the Holy Spirit who lives within you, whom you have received as a gift from God? We are not our own. We were bought with a price, purchased with uh, with a preciousness, and paid for, made his own. So then honor him and bring glory to him in your body. We can't bring glory to him being scared. We can't bring glory to him being worried. We can't bring glory to him being stressed. We can't bring glory to him because that's not his spirit. So if, if, we, if, if we are operating in anything other than his spirit, then we are allowing the devil to live through us and not the Lord. We have to allow the Lord to live through us because he lives in us. So what we're doing is every time we get into that wrong spirit, we are actually accepting a foreign substance in our bodies. Oof. A disease that's trespassing. And we got to tell it, get out. I did not give you permission to be here. There is no place for you to be here. The Lord lives here. And that is what we do when we do our anointing or prayer. We specifically say that as well because we're sowing those seeds. Because we have power over the evil one. He does not have power over us. 
But when we get into that spirit, he has legal access. Legal access. I'm going to finish nine, and then we're going to be done. So one of the most important life lessons is understanding that without health, it is almost impossible to do all Yod has called us to do. Yet, Many have led others to Yod while themselves lay sick in the hospital. Many have done great things despite physical pain and illnesses, yet we, our bodies, act as Yod's temple. Excuse me. We are meant to be an example of Yod's love and goodness. And sometimes sickness comes, but there are things we are meant to do both in our call and to maintain our temples. Eating healthy when possible, making good choices such as exercising, making time to sleep, etc., are things we do to maintain our physical temples. When we are healthy, we can think clearly, we can make decisions, we can keep focus, and so much more. Further, if God has called us to be his light in, say, a bank, and we are always sick, unable to sit or stand, for any length of time and having to take sick leave, then we cannot answer our call, which is why the devil attacks us. But once we know, we can speak to it and say, get out of here. You don't belong here. Recognize it right right away. Get out of here. You don't belong here. Uh, before I came down, I wasn't feeling good. I was shaken. I said, uh-uh, the devil is a liar. You're not stopping me from getting on tonight. You're not going to stop me from the 14 days of revival that I have to do. You're not going to stop me. I'm still going to do it. We cannot be that light in the darkness. Because those in the darkness fail to see Yah's light in you because of our absence or our sickness. Money can be made again. Health, once depleted, can often only be restored by Yod. So it's very, very important that our bodies are made to bring him glory. But he lives inside of us. And we have to remember that. And we have to keep our bodies healthy as much as we can. And this is why the Lord calls, calls us to fast as well. Because we want to eat all kinds of stuff that we're not supposed to be eating. But the Lord is saying, hey, I'm calling you to do this. And because I'm calling you to do this, I need you to get your body in shape. Because you're going to need energy in order to do this. Because when we're, when, when, when we're um, evangelizing to people, when we're ministering to people, they are pulling from us. That's why we're often drained after we finish helping someone, because they're pulling the energy from us. So if we're not fully charged up with the right power source, then we're not going to be able to do the Lord's work. So we have to make sure that we're doing the Lord's work over what it is that we want. So the Lord said, don't eat no sweets, don't drink no sore drinks, strong drinks, don't have no sex, don't you, don't eat no meat. Then guess what, y'all? That's what we need to do. Ain't no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Now, again, you have a choice. You can do it or you cannot do it. That's up to you. But I'm going to do what the Lord needs me to do. And I'll pray that we all do it because it's very important. It's very important for us to come together for the Lord because let me tell you something. Them demons and that evil one and his children, they come together. They work together. They do all kinds of vile, disgusting things that he tells them to do, to eat, drink blood, all kinds of stuff, and they don't complain. And they don't say, I can't do this, I won't do this, none of that. They are there, and they take shifts. That's how many of them it is. They take shifts 
so that they can make sure that somebody is on call at all times. We need to be able to do the same thing. So let's end. They are both angelic and demonic forces that are actively working around us. There is evil that is fought in spiritual warfare. We must pray for El Yahu and Ilio and Ilio's ills will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. For the gates of hell will not prevail against the work that El Yahu and Ilio and Ilio El has purpose for us to accomplish as it is his will that is being done in our lives. Thus let his will be done and none of our own. For he knows the work he has for us, the purpose of good and not to harm us but to prosper us. Hallelujah. All glory to El Yahu and Yahshua in the highest heaven. On earth, peace among men and women who he is well pleased of. Men and women of the good will of his favor. We put on the whole armor of El Yahu with Elion, Elion, El. For we're not wrestling with flesh and blood, contending only with physical opponents, but against deputies, against the powers, against the master spiritual of the world rulers of this present darkness, against the spirit forces of wickedness, the heavenly supernatural spirit. Therefore, let your will be done, El Yahu with Elion, Elion, El. Your kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. For those that look behind are not fit to be in the kingdom of God. Keep us looking forward and moving forward. Let us not live the life of the flesh, but let us live the life of the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit of God dwell within us, direct us, to control us. Let not those that do not possess the Holy Spirit, those without the Holy Spirit of the Messiah, those who are in the true child of God, come against us. Let us all come together, those that are led by the Spirit of God, all sons and daughters of God. For the spirit to which we have now received is not a spirit of slavery, not a spirit to us once to put us once more in bondage to fear. But let us know we have received the spirit of sonship, of daughtership, of the bliss of which we cry, Abba, Abba, Father, Father. For the Spirit himself thus testifies together with our own spirit, assuring us that we are children of, of God. We are heirs. Blessed assurance, Father. Your blessed assurance, Father. Our Father, who's dwelling in the, and this is a new one as well, our Father, who's dwelling in the heavenly realm, May the glory of your name be the center on which our lives turn. Manifest your kingdom realm and cause your every purpose to be fulfilled on earth, just as it is fulfilled in heaven. We acknowledge you as our provider of all we need each day. Forgive us the wrongs we have done as we ourselves release forgiveness to those who have wronged us. Rescue us every time we face tribulation and set us free from evil. For you're the king who rules forever with power and glory. You're the king and you're invited to come in, Yahshua. You're the king and you're invited to come in, El Yahuwah, Ilion, Ilion, El. Have your way. We worship you. We glorify you. We praise you. We honor you. We magnify you. We love you. We seek your face. We seek your face. Hallelujah. Okay. So, um, uh, ministers of the new covenant, does anyone have anything that they would like to say? If so, please unmute your phone. This is La, um, Minister Lucretia Williams, uh, San Angelo, Texas, Minister of the New Covenant. Um, just want to tell everybody and to encourage everybody to continue walking the way of Yah, the Almighty Yah, the All Knowing, Hallelujah. All Everything, the Most. Hi, God um, and Yahshua, and I just want to thank uh, God for the Holy Spirit who is Gabriel, and uh, we just uh, need to prepare as much as possible as we can, and uh, I love everyone. I love everyone. Love you too. Amen, amen. Does anyone else have anything to say? Any of the ministers of the New Covenant have anything to say? If so, please unmute your phone. Okay. All right. We're going to end. Thank you again, everyone, for coming on. Thank you for um, hanging with me for the uh, that time. Um, the Holy Spirit was speaking. I had to get the message out. Um, we'll continue it um, with 10 tomorrow. I'll wait. I won't do it at 7. I'll wait till 12 because most people are getting on at 12. So I'll wait till 12 to finish the, the number 10 um, uh, way for us to prosper. Um, so.
So go forth, everyone. I love you all. I love y'all. I love y'all. I love y'all. Please be encouraged. Stay strong. And, and, and let's do this. Go forth in divine love, divine truth and knowledge, divine health, divine protection, divine power, divine anointing. I love y'all. Have a great night.